Hey Taylor Army, welcome back to All Things Taylor. So I have to be quite honest with you all. Um, I had a completely different plan for today's YouTube video, but um, I noticed I had all these questions that I was really, realistically speaking, unless I spend every minute for the next like five days on social media, I wasn't going to be able to answer everybody's, uh, you know, fan questions. So I thought it would be kind of fun to kind of just do an impromptu Ask Taylor without actually doing an Ask Taylor, because then the, uh, the questions are kind of more funny um, instead of more deliberate. So I, I thought that would be kind of fun. So ah, that's what we're going to be doing today. By the way, not only is my hair back to red and I'm like super loving all the different accidental colorings that are like going through this all. Um, I'm also excited to say my nails are back and they are black, back in black. I'm so excited. It cost me less than $10. So I'm going to keep proving to everybody online that you do not be, you, you, you seriously do not need to be spending thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars because unless you spend all that money already, you don't wake up like this. <laughs> it takes work. And you don't have to like literally be like <laughs> spending all the money in your bank account. <laughs> so <clears throat> I actually have my book. So um, I'm going to be multitasking. I am working. I'm excitedly working. I love this on my Look at all that pretty stuff going on. Uh, this gear is made by my girl, Danny Gosha on Instagram. You can find her. She has a, a website as well. She made this gear for me and she is absolutely fabulous. As you can see, she totally took uh, my vision and kind of brought out this kind of gothic yet modern style warrior queen of dragons sort of aspect that I was really just like kick ass going for, you know, um, to kind of, I always like evolving on my character and my look and kind of, but keeping subtle little details because the devil's in the details, right? At least in my opinion. Um, so it kind of pays homage to, you know, the progression of my character. And as you can see, there's all these fun scales and all this other stuff. So I'm just like super excited. <laughs> and gear does not just look this way, guys. When you have someone that can design really well, you end up with products like this instead of looking like you just popped off of eBay. <laughs> so let's be real. I think more people need to respect all of the, the different aspects that really go into that superstar look. Like it doesn't just happen. You know, you can, you know, it just doesn't. <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to be doing while multitasking in this video is I'm going to be answering some fan questions. And I'm also working on adding more and more and more glam to my gear because I have other other orders coming in from fans and from other workers who want different things glammed like hats, their gear, sneakers. I'm going to be doing someone's headphones. So, and I'm going to be doing my the back of my otter box for my cell phone. So I have all these really cool projects going on. I love to multitask and stay busy. Right now, there is over 600 stones on this gear currently. Um, it took me about five hours worth of work. I have several hours more to put on, but I, I just love that larger than life that kind of just jumps off when you have these really good, the really good lighting and the really good cameras. Uh, Salem seems to think my gear is a toy, so he's putting it under the table. Um, no, you're being camera shy? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so these are some of the things that kind of happen behind the scenes that I really just love. I love helping other workers, you know, just kind of being able to jump out of the screen, so to speak, and give them that extra little, that extra confidence when they can walk out and just feel this just larger than life persona that's just to me, just amazing. You know, if, if you look back at some old WWE tape, someone who always glitzed while they were on camera with their gear was uh, someone like Shannon Moore. It always looked like his, uh, his, his that his gear pants were just like with sparkle. Um, you can look at Charlotte uh, these days or Alexa Bliss. You know, a lot of their gear just sparkles. The reason why it sparkles is because there's, ton there's tons of people behind the scenes making the gear do this. <laughs> so that's something I love to do. <clears throat> Anyways... Not that you want, not that you asked. Uh, <clears throat> so I wrote down some fun questions today. Uh, first one is, do you have any favorite flowers? Yes, I do. Um, on almost any given day, I will have sunflowers in my house and I'm actually growing some outside of my tiny house. I'm just so excited. Uh, sunflowers just instantly make me happy and scientifically proven, by the way, the color yellow uh, produces happiness. It's kind of one of those colors that just, uh, it's almost like, instant vitamin C, but in color form, it just, you know, makes you happy, gets rid of a uh, depression and anxiety or, oh man, you know, I didn't sleep right. And then all of a sudden you see flowers and you're like, oh, 
<laughs> so I love sunflowers. I love black dyed roses. I love white roses and I love, um, like, uh, wild lilies and orchids, <laughs> but sunflowers and black roses are definitely my all time favorites. <laughs> so that one's done. <clears throat> Uh, what was the first concert you ever went to? Super fun. Okay, check that one out. So one of my first ever concerts, and it was actually the first concert I ever went to. It was totally awesome, by the way. It was a Red Hot Chili Peppers concert live in Boston. So freaking sweet, guys. It was awesome. So uh, our parents allowed us to play hooky for the day because we, uh, me and my girlfriend at the time, her name was Melinda. We, we had really good grades going on. So we got to play hooky. And that evening, uh, her and I got to uh, go to Boston by ourselves, which was like crazy. And we were in high school. <clears throat> and we got to see Red right Hot Chili Peppers. RHCP. It was so awesome. We had standing seats, so we had just terrible seats. Uh, we had to stand through the whole concert, but uh, it was totally worth it. It was crazy nuts, too, guys, because there was this band that was opening for um, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. They were called Mars Volta. I don't know if anybody is like knows them or remembers them or whatever. Uh, they got booed off stage. It was bad. Like, Seriously, I thought people were going to riot. It was insane. Uh, what was really crazy, too, is, like, this was almost a sold-out show, and the date that we actually went to was a show that they had to add on because they didn't expect to sell out of the other shows that they had leading up to that particular date in Boston to just sell out so quickly. So it was so cool. Not only were we on uh, a, a last-minute impromptu added uh, show date for Red Hot Chili Peppers, it was also sold out. Mars Volta got booed off stage. It was so awesome. And it was um it was after Stadium Arcadium had come out, but they didn't play all the songs from Stadium Arcadium. They played a lot of the old stuff, so like Scar Tissue and, and all that, and Californication. So it was just oh, super awesome memories. I still have like the lanyard and stuff. Super cool. <laughs> so that was my first ever concert. <laughs> oh, uh, side note, one band that I always try to see, and I never get to see them, it's always like an epic fail every single time, is Slayer. Uh, I always try to see that band live, and it just never freaking happens. It's like, oh... <laughs> every time uh so but yeah uh that's who I named my cat after because she's a freaking badass so <laughs> what else I ain't even mad about it <laughs> okay let's see <clears throat> do you speak any other languages besides English Actually, yes, but I'm not really like 100% fluent. Um, I used to actually speak sign language when I was in elementary school and junior high. Um, I communicated with this girl, Heather, who was deaf and, um, you know, we really wanted to, I, I just wanted her to have other people that she could talk to in class, you know, and, and not be so lonely for her where, where it's just her and her interpreter, you know? <laughs> so uh, it was really cool. I got to, to learn that and, and get to communicate with her and be like really cool friends. We ended up going to different high schools. So I ended up like not really using the sign language anymore. And I, I forgot a lot of it. So that kind of sucks. But I, I, I kind of want to make a point of actually, you know, uh, learning it again, because I, I feel like that's really cool and really important. I, and I loved seeing all those uh, videos of uh, different characters and stuff that are at theme parks and they can interact with deaf kids and it's like a real big surprise and you know an embracing community I just think that's so cool it kind of warms my heart and gives me the feel so I want to be a part of that <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I actually was uh really good with Latin I actually um introduced it into some of my promos one of the promos I did at WWE when I was an extra was in front of William Regal um and Brookside, and uh, <laughs> and I cut the whole thing in Latin, and they were kind of just like, whoa, and then I translated it to English. Um, obviously, I was kind of a silly. I thought when I took Latin in high school and college that it would help me learn other languages. I guess I just don't really have a brain for languages, because it really did not help me at all. <laughs> you know, I... Um, I mean, it kind of sort of helped with Italian, but even that is still so different from, you know, the original old very ancient old school Latin that I had learned, but it's all good and fun. I can at least like, you know, conjugate verbs and whatnot. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I used to know the Hebrew alphabet. The, I can say a few sentences in French. I can count to 10 in Korean. Um, I can say a few things in German, a few things in Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese. Um, let's see. I knew a couple things in Farsi, believe it or not, um, but I forgot. Um, and like one or two things that are pretty much just swears in Spanish. <laughs> so uh, I think I would probably get a lot of heat if I ever wrestled in Mexico. <laughs> 
All right, so there goes that one. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> what has been some of the inspirations for your looks in the last couple years in wrestling? Oh, this is really fun. So some of the inspirations for my looks were also a lot of the inspirations for my wrestling gimmicks. Um, I was taught um, at Ohio Valley Wrestling to take inspiration from a lot of different things from other wrestlers from the past and from pop culture and kind of immerse them into something that's completely uniquely yours. But since they're they're based off of pop culture and other things, you'll sub you'll like uh, subconsciously connect with other people on a on a level that they may not understand why, but they're identifying with it and they'll go along with it and it makes it more identifiable to more people. And um, I remember William Regal talking about how, you know, when you first walk out in front of your Titantron or walk through the curtain, you have basically like three seconds to connect with people in the crowd before they just completely lose interest. Now, three seconds is not a lot of time. So you really need to make use of every little millisecond. <clears throat> so that's something I really took to heart. So um, I was always a really huge Elvira fan uh, growing up. I loved Vampira. I loved Elvira. Um, I loved Jessica Rabbit. I loved Maleficent. I loved Madame Hydra, uh, Rita Repulsa. Um, I loved Celine from Underworld. I loved Ursula and Ariel from The Little Mermaid. So I kind of joke that since I'm a Gemini born in June, that <laughs> since we're twins, half of my personality is Ursula, half of it's Ariel. Uh, <laughs> but whatever. Um, and uh, the Phoenix, Dark Phoenix, uh, Jade from Mortal Kombat. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh my gosh. They're, they're, uh, oh, The Coven, that movie, The, the uh, Coven and The Craft um, and some other ones that don't immediately pop come into my mind. Um, but yeah. Oh, oh, Morticia. Morticia Adams. <laughs> Duh. So I kind of took a lot of those different little mannerisms and different things. Um, oh, and Sherry Moon Zombie, by the way. Love Sherry Moon Zombie. Um, so as you can see, I took so many different little things from so many different people and different things. So that way I could uh, kind of mold them into something that was completely uniquely Taylor Hendricks. And so that's what I did. So if you look at my old wrestling gear and kind of watch it evolve to today, my original two piece gear, which kind of morphed into my one piece gear was right after my, my post TNA, I wore this red and gold, uh, two piece that had pointed gauntlets and pointed knee pad covers. And that was based off of the dark Phoenix. And I slowly developed that into <clears throat> a one piece outfit that I pretty much still wear to this day, except a more PG version. And um, that was based off of Jade from Mortal Kombat, the Phoenix, the Dark Phoenix, uh, ch -ch -ch -ch, Poison Ivy, Madam Hydra, Jessica Rabbit Maleficent, and uh, specifically uh, Morticia. So my valet dresses, my ring gear, I kind of all wanted it to just, you know, be as soon as you saw it. Oh, that's Taylor Hendricks, you know. <laughs> so that's kind of a fun question. I like that one. <laughs> uh, apparently, like. The, the agenda for the day was people talking about botches, which made me like laugh hysterically because like my move wasn't even a botch. So whatever, bro. But one of my favorite pastimes when I'm on the internet is trolling trolls. And sometimes they are just so idiotic and stupid that they don't even realize that they're being trolled back and they're taking it so seriously. Like they get so butthurt. It's so funny. So that's kind of what I was doing today. Hilarious time while I'm doing cardio. Hilarious. Totally got me through cardio today. <laughs> and I needed the help because I was just not into it <laughs> today for cardio. <clears throat> so one of the biggest botches um, for me personally, um, I've never had really, knock on my table, a crazy huge botch. I'm usually botch police where I see a lot of people in matches kind of... <gasps> freeze. And then I'm always the person that's like, well, we got to keep going, you know, and I don't freeze. I kind of just go with it. And then I'll either be pretending to hit them or pinning them while I'm still asking them, hey, are you okay? Or, hey, this got messed up. Let's go to the next thing. <clears throat> whatever, whatever. You know, <clears throat> the action's got to keep going. <laughs> you know, you can't insult fans by trying to just, you know, when they know something happened and you kind of don't acknowledge it. So uh, I had a match within the last uh, six or no, the la within the last year, where the person totally messed up my, my move. And the fans knew something wasn't right, but they didn't quite know what was going on. And I was just like, she fucked up! <laughs> or she fucked that up! And it was kind of just really funny, and everybody was just laughing. It's like, you know, you can't, you can't necessarily, you can, you can cover some things, but some things when they're just obvious, it's like, why not just run with it and be like, yeah, that happened. What ifs? You know, <laughs> it's like kind of two of those things, like, zero ifs. Um... And it was great. It was like part of the show. It was awesome. 
<laughs> one of the biggest botches I ever had was probably really early on in my career. And it happened in like Everett, Massachusetts or Danvers, Massachusetts. And I was wrestling a girl that I don't think wrestles anymore. Her name was Deanna DeVille. And I had her sitting on the, uh, laying into the ropes like this, kind of like how a person would be positioned if they were going to get hit with a 619. And I was running, I hit the ropes behind her and was running. And then I think what was the supposed to happen was I'm supposed to jump and like kind of like leg guillotine her on the ropes but my upper body is supposed to stay above the top rope and I kind of land like this with one leg through the middle and over her neck sort of thing I don't know what happened but it looks like I freaking straight up died uh I'm running uh my leg like does like a split somehow like mid-air thing through the ropes and I end up going like I guillotined myself and like fell through the rope somehow no idea <laughs> One of the biggest botches of my career. Luckily, it happened early on. <clears throat> um, another botch I had was one time I was wrestling Madison Rain at Shimmer. And <clears throat> she's going for a crucifix pin, which comes around behind me like this, right? Well, I have an injury where this shoulder will actually pop out of the socket. And it makes like a sound. And the, the motion behind me. So uh, right here, this is my right shoulder. She swings and, and captures this right shoulder and swings up behind. And the momentum kind of brought me forward like this. And she swings her whole body behind like a crucifix pin. And her legs hook around almost like a grapevine uh, trap hold on this arm. And then they're supposed to pull you back like this. And your shoulders end up on the mat like a, like a cross, like a crucifix pin. Hence the name, right? <laughs> well, she starts to swing up. And poor thing, I felt so bad. And I had to explain to her later because she didn't know at the time what had happened. So it kind of just made me look like I did not know how to wrestle, which was kind of embarrassing. Especially when you're on Shimmer, which is like known to be like wrestling, 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 wrestling. Um, my shoulder popped out with her momentum and it kind of took me forward because that's where the momentum, you know, was happening. It was kind of going forward before I get brought back. And I kind of almost dipped her on her head by accident and I felt so bad. So that was kind of a botch. <clears throat> We made up for it, but it was like in the back. I was like, yo, girl, the shoulder popped out. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> so that was one. Um, other botches that have happened in the ring, but they weren't me. Um, I had this one girl that was going through for almost like a house show suicide type dive. And she was three quarters of the way through. And we were on the outside uh, supposed to be catching. And I'm over here fighting one girl. Um, and they, there's two other girls fighting. And then everybody's supposed to kind of meet in the middle. Well, um, the biggest girl that was in the match was going to be doing the, the catching because of how the spot was lined up, right? And how it was called. And the girl who's coming through the ropes, her feet got stuck and she went, Nyo! and her whole face bashed against the under part of the apron. It was terrifying looking. And I just remember a bunch of the girls were like, oh, you know, because it, it was that bad. Even the, even like the whole like arena went like silent. Um, and I was just like, F it. I grabbed her, picked her up, <laughs> tossed her into the ring, just completely started calling audibles, immediately pinned her. I'm like, come on, she just hit her freaking face, pin, pin, count it, right? And then after, as I'm yelling at the ref, I'm actually like, in the, I'm like, okay, are you okay? Are you okay? Your nose looks like it's fucking broken, dude. Are you okay? Are you okay? All right, now I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna shit can you back out and we're gonna go back to the way this was supposed to go down. Are you okay? You ready for this? And then I'm yelling at the ref like this, but really I'm telling the ref what I want him to do, which is I want him to tell the girls on the outside this, 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 and this. <laughs> so that's one botch that I remember. And then I was in a tag match um, with actually one of my favorite tag team uh, people I've ever tag team with. And my tag team partner was taking the heat in the ring. We, we have to be baby faces even though we should have been heels <laughs> and uh the girl that's supposed to be in the heel in the match literally forgot how to do a heat and that's exactly what she said from from her mouth she forgot how to do a heat <clears throat> and we were like you've been wrestling for how many years and you forgot how to do a heat like pin my partner have her kick out put her in a hold and talk to her or tell the ref to talk to somebody else and get ideas or drag my my partner into your corner and tag your your partner in <laughs> let your partner take over and you guys just communicate tagging and out back and forth whatever do what you got to do you shouldn't know how, you, like you're not green so you should know how to what to do in a heat <laughs> um and it just got so bad and uh, mine and my opponent my partner's moves were just completely getting messed up so we had to like go home we just called an audible and went home <laughs> and i remember my my tag partner was like screaming at this chick and that was really nice. I was like, you know, shit happens. You know, you know how to do this. You know, that wasn't okay. But you know what? It's over. It's done with. We can't change it. We can just learn from it. Move forward. It's not like you don't know how to do this. You know, you're, you're here for a reason. You know, I was trying to be very like nice about it, even though I was also pissed. But I feel like yelling and decimating people like it just makes you a bitch. You don't really come off, you know, helpful.
And what's funny is she still follows my my tag partner and like doesn't follow me on social media. So it's like it's it's just really funny how that stuff works. But so those are some of the biggest botches that um, I've ever either done or been a part of. <laughs> Let's see. <clears throat> Things you can't live without. Okay, this could be kind of fun. <laughs> my otter box for my cell phone because I'm a calamity outside of the ring. I'm always tripping, falling, bruising, banging myself, dropping my phone. So I have a screen protector and an otter box. Cannot live without that or these YouTube videos would never happen. My social media wouldn't happen. Nothing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's currently for wash, so I can't show you, but I drink about a gallon of water every single day. So I'm really lucky to be sponsored by the company Gallon Gear and they do like these custom fun... Um, gallon reusable water jug so that way you're not constantly like hurting the environment with stuff like this <laughs> my Nutribullet I make smoothies several times a week and I make some to last throughout the week um I because I don't like certain foods but I can drink them so that's kind of what I love to do would not be able to live without my Nutribullet uh my dog which also means Zyrtec I would die without my Zyrtec <laughs> hats I am obsessed with hats I have about 20 to 30 hats even though I live in a tiny house <laughs> Um, let's see. What else could I not live without? Protein ice cream. I love ice cream, but I don't like all the sugar and all the other crap that goes along with ice cream. So I love things like Arctic Zero and Eat Enlightened because they make uh, like low calorie protein ice creams. So that's kind of my favorite snack when I need to be really good and I can't have a lot of calories or sugar and all this bad crap. I have a uh, protein ice cream. Yay! <laughs> Um, <clears throat> other items I cannot live without sunscreen. I am like Casper's cousin. I am so porcelain. So I wear like, I wear baby SPF 50 sunscreen every single day, even on my hands and my toes, because I just get sunburned within like 15 minutes. Uh, I used to get super tan as a kid and then puberty happened and it was like, uh, yeah, there, there went tanning. I can't tan. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Gosh, what else can I not live without? Music. Music, my uh, my daily planner, my goals journal. Books. Yes. Uh, I love to read all the time. That was a hard question. Oh, that was a good one. Thank you, Taylor Army. <clears throat> pet peeves. What are some of your biggest pet peeves? Okay. Some of my biggest pet peeves are people in the business, they try to freaking cut promos and then they're talking shit about people in their promos and then they act like a little bitch and then they apologize for what they send the promo. It's like, don't try to say that was a work because at the end of the day, you're probably saying it for a reason. So it, it, it it's not a work. Okay. <laughs> Owing up to your own shit. If you don't like that person and you're decimating them in the promo, don't act like you're, don't, don't be a little bitch. <laughs> like own up to your BS. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> toilet paper. I hate when it, uh, it's hooked on the bottom. It has to be over the top. Um, I hate when the toilet seats are left up. Um, I'm a huge germaphobe, so I cannot stand it when I see a bunch of, uh, wrestlers or people in public that don't wash their hands, uh, in the bathrooms. Can't stand it. Cannot stand it. <clears throat> I know a wrestler who's a germaphobe. It's hilarious. Um, let's see. Oh yes. I hate when I open up my cupboards and all the labels are every which way on cans or spices. I like all of my spices. I'm very OCD to all be facing the same way and all be in line. So that way, when I look in the cupboard, I can tell exactly what I need and don't need. Um, I'm a person that thinks like everything needs its own proper place. I hate mess. I also hate clutter. <laughs> so, um, let me see. <clears throat> Oh, yes. People that do not use their turn signals. It is literally like 0.5 inches away from your fingers on the steering wheel. Flick that freaking thing. Let me know where the heck you're going. And if I'm going like, if it, oh, God, I can't stand. I'm like all fired up. My Boston showing. <laughs> okay, I'll leave that one. Let's see. Oh, inspirations for my gimmick. I kind of tied that into uh, what's been the inspiration for my looks. So we'll skip that one. Star Wars or Lord of the Rings. Which one would you choose? Totally easy. Even though I love Star Wars, I'm like a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I grew up with Lord of the Rings. My mom used to read it to me all the time as a kid. I even grew up watching uh, the like the 1970s animated Lord of the Rings. I bet a lot of you people didn't even know that existed. Boom. You're welcome. Um, <clears throat> I've read the books. Love them. I am such a huge fan. I even had like their, their goblets when they were first coming out in the movie theaters and stuff. I was so obsessed. Lord of the Rings all the way. Uh, but then obviously I still love Star Wars. But if I had to choose, L-O-T-R. Lord of the Rings. 
hands down. <laughs> Let me see. Oh, cross that out. Dream opponents. Ooh, juicy. Okay. One of my dream opponents would have to be Velvet McIntyre. I was introduced to her work after I started wrestling <laughs> and I was just totally inspired. She's this uh, Irish Canadian uh, wrestler from the 80s and 90s. And uh, she was actually uh, WWF champions with uh, a woman that I am so blessed to get really awesome advice from and to know uh, uh, Lady Victoria. So I would love to have a match with either one of those ladies. I love them. And even a tag match, that would be so awesome too. Um, another dream opponent of mine would definitely be Natty and Beth Phoenix. I love them. When I was in developmental, I would just hear nothing but amazing things about the type of women they were in locker rooms and their presence and how they led matches and things. I just I just love them. And I love that they don't fit into like a, a typical mold or stereotype. They, they do them and they do them so well that they don't need to try to change themselves for anything. I love that. I, I just, that's something that can't be taught. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> um, let's see. I would love to have a rematch against Lisa Marie Varen uh, because like I was, you know, even though I'd been wrestling for a long time uh, when I got gut check, I was still green as grass. I was just this young girl who like didn't know my butt from my elbow. So, and I have no problem saying that, you know what I mean? <clears throat> So I would love to have a rematch with her. Um, I would love to have a match with Melina. I love seeing her on social media, just doing her thing. She's such an awesome, positive, fun-loving person. And I love that type of aura, that type of energy. So I think that would be really fun. Oh my gosh, a huge inspiration for, you know, how I approach promos and gimmicks and my matches, um, especially as a heel is uh, Sherry Martel. If you watch my wrestling, you'll notice that I kind of took a lot of inspiration from Sherry Martel <laughs> meets Lisa Marie Baron meets, um, I kind of want to say like heel glamour girls in a way. I, I love them. Um, I never had the type of skill to emulate the jumping bomb angels, but I loved them. Uh, <laughs> but it was just not my thing. I, it would have been like botcha mania for me if I would have tried to, you know, do my own version of them. It was just not in my style or my skill set. So... <laughs> <laughs> I love them too. So yeah, if you look at a lot of my wrestling, you'll kind of notice that. And uh, you'll kind of also notice a lot of my uh, martial arts background since I have a huge background in Taekwondo. And I'm pretty much all legs, so no upper body really. Um, but that's what makes me look a lot stronger than I actually, that's what makes me a lot stronger than I actually look. Uh, and that's why I love the tombstone so much. And I love all my different kicks and stuff and my strikes uh, very much into my Taekwondo background. So that's really cool. <laughs> Let's see. Other dream opponents. Hmm. I think Asuka and I would have so much fun in the ring, guys. Um, I love interacting with her on social media. She keeps it real. So do I. It's so much fun. Um, I think Lacey Evans and I would have a really good time in the ring. Um, I love Tori Wilson to death, guys. Her Hall of Fame speech was, it really just spoke to my heart. It was almost like uh, picturing myself like having a speech like that someday because she was just keeping it real. She was honest. She was authentic, genuine. You can't, you can't mimic that authenticity without actually being authentic. So I would love to have a match with her as well just because it was, it, I don't know, there's just that love there. I love it. Um <clears throat> Wow, there's so many. I would love to have a rematch maybe with Awesome Kong because when I wrestled her, I was so green. She had to lead me through that whole thing. So embarrassing. Oh, gosh, what an idiot I was. <laughs> um, all right. <clears throat> I'm sure there's a lot more, but my brain's kind of... Let's see. <clears throat> Cats or dogs? Oh, dogs. Hands down, I love cats, but um, I had my one cat, Chiffers, for 19 years. He was with me through every wrestling opportunity. He was with me from the time I was, like, 9 turning 10 to the time I was about 28 um, when he died. Um, I felt like no other cat would kind of compare to how awesome he was and so chill. I used to do this voice for him where he was, like, an old New York man, like, Ugh, these grumpy kids, I'm trying to sleep here. Don't you have any respect? <laughs> He would just be so funny. Uh, I remember he would like swat playfully at my dog and then he would feel bad because my dog was a puppy at the time. And then he would just put his paw around and be like, 
<laughs> and start licking my dog. It's like, you just swatted at him with both of your paws and now you're like licking him like, sorry, bro. So funny. So he was like a crotchety little old man from New York. So funny. Love that cat. So yeah, I'm more of a dog person, but I love and rescue dogs and cats. So I'm just an animal lover. I love chickens. I love ducks. I, I actually don't mind snakes, to be honest. They don't really scare me. Um, I don't mind lizards and, and cats and dogs and all kinds of stuff. I love animals. <clears throat> so yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Do you have any major role models? Super easy, hands down. Anybody that's been following me for a while knows I'm a diehard Betty Davis fan. Um, getting to meet uh, uh, Catherine Cermak, who uh, wrote a book about Betty Davis, who is Betty Davis's really good friend and personal assistant for years and years, was like the closest I would ever be to getting to meet Betty Davis. So Betty Davis is hands down my professional role model. Not only was she born in Massachusetts, but she was just revolutionary. So when I say dare to be revolutionary, I genuinely mean it. I dare to be revolutionary and I want other people to do too. So, Betty Davis, hands down. Love, 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 love her. I know she's up there. She's watching down on me. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay. What movies are you excited for? Ooh, so many. So, uh, The Dark Phoenix the, the, the Dark Phoenix is coming out on my birthday, guys. June 7th. My birthday is 6789. Coolest birthday ever. Dark Phoenix. It's like it's a sign or something. Ooh, the X-Files. <laughs> I'm excited for Godzilla. I grew up watching Godzilla all the time. I even had um, the King Caesar uh, from Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla. I had the, the King Caesar figurine. I used to, I knew all the songs from uh, Godzilla versus Mechagodzilla and from Mothra and all that other stuff. So I'm a crazy, huge, not closeted Godzilla fan. So I definitely want to see that. I've seen all the other ones. Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Godzilla vs. Mothra, Ghidra. Come on. I, <laughs> my mom, I grew up with my mom watching all of those. So it's kind of cool to see how uh, mainstream it's become because I felt like it was kind of like uh, dark nerdy <laughs> growing up. You know, Godzilla, because a lot of my friends were like, what the hell is that? You know? Um, I am also really excited for it. Chapter two. Um, I'm a huge Stephen King fan. I collect his books. I, oh, I love it so much. I love the, like the horror genre. Um, so I'm really excited for that. Um, I'm a huge, uh, you know, Tim Curry fan. So getting to see someone try really hard to carry on the legacy of what Tim Curry brought into it is kind of cool. You know, even if, you, even if you don't like the attempt, at least you can respect that they, you know, that the person's trying. And I just think that's really cool. Um, <clears throat> what other ones? Oh, oh, Secret Life of Pets 2. I love kids movies, so I'm really excited for that. I'm excited for the, the next Spider-Man. I'm excited for Endgame. I haven't seen it yet. Um, man, there are so many that I, I, like, I have, like, this long list that I'm kind of just drawing a blank right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, Ma. Totally dying to see that. God, I, I love that woman so much. She is so talented. She is hilarious and psycho all at the same time. Love it. <laughs> Did I miss any? Mm, 